Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab, and today we are taking another look at the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Ti Super, specifically this card here, which is the MSI Ventus 3X. Now, as a lot of you are probably already aware, this card had issues in the lead up to the embargo for the 4070 Ti Super a few days ago. Now, specifically, the performance was meant to be around 5% lower than where it should be with this particular model. Now, in the lead up to the review, we received a BIOS update for this card, and that was meant to improve the situation from a 5% deficit to just a 3% deficit, uh, deficit in performance. Obviously, that's not fixing the situation. I don't know why it was even worth updating or releasing that BIOS. We just wanted to fix and we wanted, we wanted to be able to get on with our reviews. And there are lots of very unhappy journalists out there right now and YouTubers who had to deal with that situation right up until the launch. Now, it's obviously difficult from a point of view of uh, me meeting the embargo and making sure that you're out there delivering your content when it's expected from your audience. But on the other hand, you need to make sure that you're giving the manufacturer a fair ride. And a fair ride in this situation probably isn't launching with your review on the embargo date with potentially lower results than this card is otherwise capable of. So. It was a very difficult decision, but what swayed my uh, p personal point of view to give a review of this card on launch day was the fact that neither that BIOS update nor the one that was released in the couple of hours before the embargo, which was, uh, as far as I could see, was meant to completely fix the issue. There were no percentage numbers in there or anything like that. It was just, this. here you are, this is the fix. Right, okay, so that's it then. Um, I didn't see any performance incre increases from either of those BIOS updates. So that was a little bit confusing. Now, um, Tech Power Up, I believe, and Hardware Unboxed have um, some pretty in-depth testing and also come to some conclusions regarding the very varied results that lots of people were seeing with this card. Some people didn't really see much benefit from the BIOS versions at all, and their cards seem to perform roughly in line with others out there, other 4070 Ti Supers, that is, while, whereas other people saw quite significant deficits. Um, I think it was Hardware Unboxed that actually said that it could just be down to the silicon on the card, and what we think was a power problem with this card that was basically constraining it too much, which meant that the silicon was doing as much as it could with the with the power that was provided, but either some cores just weren't boosting up to those frequencies or the frequencies weren't being hit in general. So obviously you've got different silicon out there, just like you have with CPUs and overclocking. Some GPU cores will, will be able to hit higher frequencies at a specific voltage than other cores. So I could just I could just potentially have a decent bit of silicon with this card, whereas some other reviewers might have had a slightly less Favorable, favorable bit of silicon. But really, this problem shouldn't have happened in the first place. Um, but also, the saga continues because MSI has released yet another version, three BIOS versions now, um, and this is now apparently being applied to a lot of other MSI 4070 Ti Supers as well. So the, the question mark remains over the performance pretty much of the entire range, but certainly of this model and when it was actually fixed, because a lot of people out there are saying, oh, well, the final fix was produced just before the uh, the embargo for the 4070 Ti a few days ago. MSI has since released a BIOS on uh, a publicly available BIOS that has a different code name or number to the one that I was given in the lead up to or the couple of hours before the embargo. So those are two distinct different BIOS versions. And as far as I'm concerned, because I've heard nothing else, they, they do different things. So what, what I want to do today, basically, is to test this card again for the fourth time now, because this is the fourth BIOS that I've had to test on this card. I want to see whether there have been any improvements. And this is probably going to be a video of two parts, or a subject of two parts, should I say, because firstly, I want to retest this card with the latest BIOS and then to compare it against a, another 4070 Ti Super. And the reason that I really wanna get this kind of just done and dusted and have a line drawn under it is because I wanna use this card for future testing, and I also want to use this card in future features and builds. So I've got a feature uh, build in, the prog in progress right now, putting this thing into a beautiful Fractal Design Terra Mini ITX case, and I don't wanna do that if I can predict what the what the comment section is going to be like with lots of people saying that card is trash, you shouldn't be buying this card, etc., etc. So 
The first part of this, uh, of this subject is today we're going to be testing this card across all my games again with the latest BIOS version to see if there are any improvements. We will then try and source another 4070 Ti Super to see if this card is still underperforming compared to another stock speed card. So it's it's going to be an interesting one because I obviously don't want to see too much of an impor a performance improvement because it means that my original results that I went with on launch day are null and void. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case and I can say right now that that isn't the case uh, given the benefits that I saw in the testing that we're just about to go through. So I'm still very confident that I was right in going with my original review numbers and the fact that they seem to be in line with a lot of other people out there. And ultimately, the most important thing is that they don't change my conclusion and we haven't seen this card leapfrog a whole bunch of other cards in the graphs. That, the, that's the most important thing and that the, both of those things have not changed. So what we're going to be doing today, as I said, is just running through my game test again with this card to see what the performance difference is, if at all, with the very latest publicly available BIOS for this MSI Ventus 3X. So without further ado, let's crack on with the benchmarks. If you're interested in my test system components, you can see a list of all the components that are used in the testing in the description below. So the first game that we're looking at is Far Cry 6 and at 1080p and 1440p we didn't see any improvement from the final BIOS and I won't run through too many of the comparisons between other cards except where we do see improvements because I've already gone over the performance of the 4070 Ti Super in my previous video, again which you can see a link to in the description below. Stepping up to 4K, both with and without DXR reflections enabled or ray tracing, in other words, we do start to see some uplift in the card uh, performance using the latest BIOS. So the minimum 99th percentile at 4K rose from 82 frames per second to 84, very, very small amount and nowhere near enough to close the gap significantly between it and the 4080, which is the next card up. And we see a one frames per second uptick on the average frame rate when DXR reflections are enabled. Our next game is Forza Horizon 5, and it's pretty easy at 1080p and 1440p. No discernible difference between the latest BIOS and the previous results that I used for the launch review. Stepping up to 4K, and the only place we saw any difference in both of these graphs was when we enabled DLSS, and we saw a two frames per second uptick in the minimum 99th percentile, and a one frame per second uptick in the average frame rate. Again, closing the gap a little bit between it and the RX 7900 XTX, but nowhere near enough to overtake that card. The next game is Halo Infinite, and I apologise for the way that the graphs are around on this one, but it was done on purpose because we've got more graphics cards tested at 1440p than we do at the other resolution, so it made sense to have that graph bigger and on the left side of the page taking up half of the page, whereas the other two are smaller and split over the second half of the page. So 1080p and 1440p, we see no difference. Stepping up to 4K though, we do see a very, very slight uptick. The minimum 99th percentile rising three frames per second from 100 to 103 and the average frame rate by one frames per second. But again, it's still not enough to overtake the next card up, which is the RX 7900 XTX. Our next game is Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition and focusing on 1080p and 1440p for the time being we see no discernible difference at 1080p while at 1440p we do see a very very small uptick in the minimum 99th percentile of 2 frames per second. Now this game is very very consistent when it comes to benchmark runs so I'm inclined to believe this is a real benefit and not something that's within the margin of error. Strangely though, at 4K we didn't really see any performance uplift and that's kind of surprising because I would have thought that the more the graphics card is put under load we would have seen a slightly higher frame rate and it's just kind of strange here that we don't see any uplift at 4K but even then it was a very very small uplift on the previous graph at 1440p. And that game is Microsoft Flight Simulator and it's no surprise that we don't see any performance uptick here. It just seems to come down to other aspects of the system as to how fast graphics cards are in this game, especially at lower resolutions. So no uptick at 1080p or 1440p. 
stepping up to 4K and we have both the standard 4K graph and we also have on the right with DLSS and frame generation enabled. And here we can see that we start to see a small uptick in the frame rate. So we've got a very, very small uptick in the minimum 99th percentile at 4K without DLSS enabled. And with DLSS and frame generation enabled, we see upticks in both the minimum and the average frame rates. But again, it's nowhere near enough to get anywhere close to the RTX 4080. So Rainbow Six Extraction now then, and this is a rare instance of seeing an uptick in performance at 1440p, but we are dealing with very, very high frame rates here. So even a very, very small uptick in performance is going to result to a more noticeable performance increase in the actual frame rates compared to much lower frame rates. So very, very small uptick at 1440p with the frame rate rising from 155 to 161 does close the gap a little bit between it and the 4080 which managed a minimum 99th percentile of 164 frames per second but again the 4080 is way ahead on the average frame rate. So we saw a bit of an uptick at 1440p and thankfully that did translate into an uptick at 4K as well. So the standard 4K graph on the left, the new BIOS rose the minimum 99th percentile by four frames per second. So that's a pretty big amount considering that we're only dealing with 80 FPS here and an 8% uptick in the average frame rate as well. So definitely something going on here. And with DLSS enabled, we see a smaller upticks with the minimum 99 percentile rising by three frames per second and the average by two frames per second so latest bios definitely doing something for rainbow six extraction our final game is watchdogs legion and here we didn't really see much of an uptick at 1080p or 1440p 1440p the only one of those two to show any kind of increase in performance with a single frames per second increase at 1440p but this game again is like metro exodus it has a very 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 consistent benchmark so slight signs of encouragement there of an increase in performance Moving on to 4K, both with and without DLSS enabled, and we do see some upticks here, but they are pretty small. Just a single frames per second increase at 4K with the new BIOS, and that's only on the average frame rate. And uh, it's the same again with DLSS enabled with the frame rate rising, or the average frame rate, should I say, rising from 78 frames per second to 79. Our final graph is power consumption. I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at the new car because obviously the extra power isn't coming for free and we do see a small uptick in power consumption, 445 watts for the original BIOS and 465 for the final release BIOS for the MSI Ventus 3X. And uh, there's still a fair way behind the RTX 4080 which draws 493 watts. So what is the final verdict on the MSI Ventus 3X? Well, as I mentioned earlier, it's probably not my final verdict because what I want to do is to test this card with my test system and hardware against another stock speed NVIDIA RTX 4070 Ti Super. I think until I've actually done that, even though we did see some minor performance improvements in some games at some resolutions today, until I've tested it against another card, I won't know for sure whether this card still has a potential problem or not. So obviously I can't, I still can't directly compare my numbers to other people because I'm using slightly different hardware. Um, some people are using the same CPU as me, a 12900K. Other people are using the latest 14900K. So I will be updating my test hardware in future to use a more modern processor. But really with this kind of caliber of card, you probably won't see that much difference between a CPU such as a 12900K and a 13900K or 14900K. So obviously the um, the performance benefits um, will exist in some in some scenarios, but until I can compare like for like with this graphics card and another one on my particular test system, I won't know for sure. But today we can say that the latest BIOS does improve performance in some games at some resolutions, but it's not by no means a an across the board improvement in uh, in every game and every resolution because that's simply not the case and I can say that with a very high degree of confidence because a couple of the games that we didn't see much of a performance increase I know are graphic, uh, graphically demanding but the benchmarks are also very consistent and very rarely vary by a, a frame or two between benchmark runs with the same product so I have a pretty high degree of confidence in uh, what I'm actually saying there so 
it's a shame it came to this. I can feel the pain of my other reviewers out there who are um, similarly perplexed by this issue and the time that it wasted. Um, you know, normally I just test a graphics card once, maybe run over a couple of benchmarks just to double check some results, but I never test things three or four times, which is what I've had to do with this graphics card. It just means other content suffers, it means essentially that I'm probably earning less money per per hour spent. So it's a very, very frustrating um, bit of information. But anyway, that's pretty much it from here today. We've seen some small improvement updates um, for the MSI Ventus 3X with the latest BIOS update. So if you do go for that card, and it's still a really good card, um, it's very, very quiet, it's very compact as well compared to a lot of cards out there. Dual slot, so it, it, it does actually fit in a lot of cases, such as the Fractal Design Terra, if you're going for a small form factor system, it does fit fine in there. So it's still, from my point of view, it's still a, definitely a card that I would that would be on my shortlist to buy if I was in the market for a 4070 Ti Super. So I want to thank um, everybody for tuning in today. I hope this all makes sense. And um, I know that some of you uh, mentioned in my original video about you know why did I go with numbers um, that you weren't sure about. But at the time, I was pretty sure about them because I tested the the last BIOS version and didn't really see many improvements, and my results seemed to tally with everyone else. So that's it for me today. Thanks for watching and I will catch you soon.